Our service continues on the top of page 3. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, Kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Therefore God also highly exalted him 
and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard, and seen, as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Exactly. This is the feast of the Holy Name. 
And some of us are going, I thought this was the first Sunday of Christmas. Uh, what's going on here? Well, it would be the first Sunday of Christmas, but it's not. It's holy name because there are certain events in our Lord's life which take precedence even over Sundays, and the Feast of the Holy Name is one of those. Now, it's interesting, we heard in the Gospel today, uh, after eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Today is eight days after Christmas Day, which was last Sunday. And Jesus would have been, if he had really been born on December 25th, which we're pretty sure he wasn't, but if he had been, he would have been taken eight days later to the temple to be circumcised. Uh, a big day in every young male's life, and done at a very early age, because of, never mind. So, Jesus was taken in, circumcised, and named. And he was given the name Jesus. We might ask, where did that name come from? Because names are pretty interesting how they come about. Uh, for instance, if your last name is Johnson, you are likely the son of, son of John. Unless you might be the daughter of John, but... If you were Smith, the blacksmith. your family member was probably a Smith, a blacksmith, you know, hammered and, and forged and did all those wonderful things. What about if your last name is Farmer? Mm -hmm. mm, probably a forebear of yours sold life insurance or, or <laughs> how <you. laughs> If your name, last name is Jones, we find out that it means son of John also. It's just a shortened kind of form. Uh, maybe the Welsh just didn't have enough consonants uh, to spare, and so they made it shorter than Johnson. In the, in, in the case of my family, um, and thanks to uh, Loretta Winninger, achieved a lot of uh, genealogy over the last several years, and, and um, I found out some things that I kind of knew but hadn't been paying much attention to. For instance, on the Jones side of the family, my great-grandfather was named George Bryant Jones. And his son was George Bryant Jones, my grandfather. But since George Bryant Jones, number one, was called George, my grandfather was called Bryant, his middle name. And so then when my father was born, he was named Bryant Wade Jones. But he couldn't be called Bryant because his father was called Bryant, even though his first name wasn't Bryant, so they called him Wade. That was until, and his mother died when he was about uh, six weeks old. And he was raised by his maternal grandmother and his father. And then when his father remarried about six years later, the new a mom didn't want the name Wade used because it had been the maiden name of her predecessor. And I don't know why she was threatened by that. The woman was no longer here on earth. But she insisted that my dad, who was not, needed to be called Junior. <laughs> Very confusing. I was named, my first name was given to me after my grandfather, Everard. Thankfully, his last name was Leland. <laughs> and thankfully, they named me after his last name. And I went through life without a nickname, and I think my parents kind of tried to make it that way. I don't know why, but they felt that the name you're given ought to be the name that you're called by. But in, and I say this with knowing that there's someone here with a college-age student, there's great rebellion at college age. And so I rebelled. I became known as Lee. Wow, isn't that powerful? <laughs> and that went fine until I was ordained. And then I realized I didn't want to be called Father Jones. And Father Lee <laughs> is an adverb. So I re wanted to revert to my original name, Leland. And the first person who greeted me after I was ordained 
said, congratulations, Father Deke. Because when I was ordained, and names involved in this too, when I was ordained a deacon, they called me Deacon Jones. And it was great humorous, greatly humorous in those days because there was a Deacon Jones who played for the Rams, part of the fearsome foursome, if I recall correctly. And he was probably about 6'6 six, six and 280, 290. He was a big man. And so the kids thought it was great fun to tell their friends, hey, you ought to come to youth group. Deacon Jones leads it. And then it was got shortened to Deke. And so when I got ordained a priest, I was known as Father Deke for the first three years of my ordination as a priest. Eventually, it got to Father Leland, and now I just sign most things Father L. And uh, so names are interesting. There are a lot of names in the Bible, and, and it's interesting how names have come about. Uh, we know that Jesus was the name given by the angel uh, before the child was conceived in the womb. It's the name above every name. Jesus was a very common Hebrew name, both centuries before and long after Mary. Jesus is the same name as Hosea and Isaiah and Joshua, meaning God saves or God is salvation. Yeshoshua, God saves, was not merely what people called Mary and Joseph's child. Rather, God's salvation was to be the very meaning and purpose of his life. God oftentimes recognizes in people in Scripture something that they don't either know about themselves or recognize or haven't realized that they are to fulfill. God then gives that person a new name. God renamed Abram and Sarai. The name Abram meant exalted father, but God called him Abraham, meaning the father of all nations. Sarai meant quarrelsome, but God called her Sarah, which means princess. God took Jacob, which means heel grabber, and you know why that was. I I think you remember that story, and named him Isaac, mean the one who's, meaning the one who struggles with God. Jesus also will call Simon, whose name means to hear or to listen, by the name Cephas or Peter, both of which mean rock. Saul, who is the persecutor of the first followers of Jesus, will be given the Greek name Paul, as he is sent to bring the good news of God's salvation found in Jesus to the Gentiles. This is what is told about us about the Feast of the Holy Name in this little book that we use as kind of our basis for our midweek service on Tuesday. We pick the, the saint closest, and this is uh, Lesser Feasts and Fasts, and Holy Name is listed in here. The designation of this day as the Feast of the Holy Name is new to the 79 revision of the prayer book. And remember, it would only be Episcopalians who call a book that is 43 years old, the new prayer book. Previous Anglican prayer books called it the Feast of the Circumcision. January 1st is, of course, the eighth day after Christmas, and we know already that Luke tells us that on the eighth day, the child was circumcised and given the name Jesus, as it was uh, told before he was born, that that was his name, it would be his name. The law of Moses required that every male child be circumcised on the eighth day from his birth. That's from Leviticus 12. And it had long been the custom of a kind of festive occasion when family and friends came together to witness the naming of the child. The liturgical commemoration of the circumcision is of Gallican origin. And a, count, and a council in Tours in 567 enacted that day was to be kept as a feast to counteract pagan festivities connected with the beginning of the new year. All of those people who went to parties last night were doing some pagan stuff. <laughs> In the Roman tradition, January 1st was observed as the octave day of Christmas, and it was especially devoted to the Virgin Mother. 
The early preachers of the gospel lay stress on the name as showing that Jesus was a man of flesh and blood, although also the Son of God, who died a human death, and whom God raised from the death, from death to be the Savior. The name was given to Jesus, as the angel explained to Joseph, because he would save his people from their sins. The word means Savior or Deliverer in Hebrew. Then as now people long to be freed from evils, political, social, and spiritual, the name of Jesus calls to mind the true freedom, which is ours through the Christ. And I, th I know you all know this, but Jesus' last name was not Christ. Jesus didn't have a last name. People in those days weren't given last names. They were known as Jesus, Jesus son of Joseph, the carpenter. And so, what does this mean for us besides a commemoration of a holy day? We have a mission to reach out in Jesus' name, sharing the same mercy, grace, and forgiveness that we have found and been given. We really don't have to go looking for those opportunities. We just need to speak up when we see someone in grief or other emotional pain. You and I may not seem essential to the great unfolding story of history, but God gives us the grace of bringing the good news to those who are hurting. The good news that God knows them by name and wants them to discover their destiny as a child of God and a joint heir with Jesus. This is our job, to not only know the name of Jesus, but to carry it to those who need to hear it and need to know its message. Our service continues on page 8, the recitation of the Nicene Creed as we face the cross of Christ and say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has clothed all things with mercy and prepared the earth as for a wedding by taking on our flesh in Christ. Trusting in that mercy, let our prayers join the festival, saying, O oh God, mighty God, merciful God, Hear our prayer. For the churches, that this assembly and all assemblies may be cradles for the word of Christ, filled with harmony and witnessing with thanksgiving. O oh God, mighty God, merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the bishops and all the leaders of the church, that in word and deed they may show forth the love and pity with which you clothe creation and all its peoples. O oh God, mighty God, merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For refugees and for those who experience a pitiless word, that you may bring them to places of safety they may call home. O oh God, mighty God, merciful God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all families, 
that their common life may be marked by mutual honor, respect, and forgiveness, and that homes may become places of hospitality to the stranger. O oh God, mighty God, merciful God, hear our prayer. For the victims of family violence, that you quickly bring relief, justice, and healing. O oh God, mighty God, merciful God, hear our prayer. For the earth, which you honored in the incarnation of your Son, and for all creatures, that a spirit of joy in its goodness and care for its future may be poured out upon us all. O oh God, mighty God, merciful God, hear our prayer. Please add your own intercessions here. For Mary, Bobby, and Aiden. Amen. Amen. For Christopher and Carly. Amen. To Lindy. Amen. For Georgia. Amen. For Melissa. Amen. Rejoicing with all the saints, with Mary and Joseph, with Stephen, John, and all the holy innocents, we commend these prayers and all our life to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our name. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let's greet one another by sharing Christ's peace. Peace. Peace, Zoomers. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that at the last bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask to your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him, and with Him, and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
join in prayer as it is printed on the bottom of page 14. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Please be seated unless you would like to come forward for a birthday prayer, an anniversary prayer, a traveling prayer. But you will be traveling with them. Oh, yes. So the traveling prayer is still appropriate. Definitely. Just not the skiing prayer for you. <laughs> 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 and 41. 41. Exactly. If I had thought to ask. Yeah, that's right. 41 years of bliss. Yeah. Anita? Oh, I have family birthdays again. Of course. Today, it's my nephew's Next week on the 8th is my grandson Matthew and my great granddaughter Hannah's birthday. Wow, great granddaughter. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, that, uh, that grandson who was born on the 1st, or a nephew who was born on the 1st, they call him No Deduction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, since Sydney and Will aren't here, this, their anniversary is tomorrow. Oh my gosh, that's right. Fantastic, a year. It's my birthday on Epiphany. The sixth, very good, okay. What a great day to have a birthday. Oh, it is, yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, okay. Want to stretch or, want both of you stretch or whatever. When the wad is too fat to go in there, that's always a good sign. <laughs> Thank you. Birthday prayers on page 830. We'll say it last. We'll do a traveling prayer and an anniversary prayer first. Gracious God be with those who travel. Keep them safe every step of their journey. Help them to realize as they travel that they go with you and take you to those whom they meet. May they also see your face and the face of those they encounter. And may that sharing of God's love be the strengthening of their relationships. Keep them safe and bring them back to those of us who love them here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Gracious God, we thank you for the blessing of years of fidelity and joy. We also thank you for the moments of pain and uh, discovery and the need always for being as forgiving with one another as you are with us. Help those celebrating their anniversaries, whether it's 41 or 1, to know how much you are a part of their lives. And may they always rejoice in your love, and may they always give that love to each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy travel, safe travel, happy anniversary, happy birthday.
we have any announcements for the good of the group today? Kim, are you doing it yourself, or do you have a spokesperson? That, uh, that thing that was set up by Malvina a couple of years ago for uh, uh, Amazon. Um, smile. smile. Smile goes into the old account, and that since the old account doesn't exist anymore, we've got to change it over. And so all of those fun things happen, and, but what better time to do it than when it's already confusing at the end of one year and the beginning of another. So thank you, Gail. Kathy? I'd like to introduce our uh, keyboardist today. This is Barbara Jarnes, and I hope she'll be back a couple of more times. Chris is going on a vacation soon, so we'll welcome Chris back, but Chris has a chance to go to the Holy Land. So she'll be here. Anyway, welcome, Barbara. Yeah, good to have you Barbara. Much appreciated. Thank you for coordinating uh, substitutes as well, Kathy. Um, the, uh, some of you are saying, and I know you are, you're saying, but wait, next Sunday if we're having the thing, then how about the other thing? Well, the other thing has been pushed to a later date, the next Sunday, and we'll have more information out about that in the um, newsletter this Wednesday, and that's the stewardship lunch will be on the 15th of January. So please be aware that that has been changed to that. And somebody, and this is a mean somebody, suggested that the only people who could come at the stewardship lunch were the people who had gotten their pledges in. And I thought, oh, that's pretty limiting. <clears throat> but then again, we do have, uh, oh gosh, a little more than half of the, of the uh, spots filled, and we hope to continue get those filled. Each one of those is an envelope that you've sent in. And the only thing I ask you is don't put your own envelope up in there because if you do then we don't know that it's there. We have sometimes discovered um, when we take that display down that there are wonderful gifts that have been provided that we didn't know about. So if you don't mind go through the office or put it in the uh, offering plate and we will record it and then put it up there for others uh, to see, not to see amounts, of course, but to see just the fact that we are hoping to fill up that entire quilt, the fabric of St. John's, and hope that you will participate in that. And even if you don't, you may still come to the lunch on the 15th. So, um, let's go ahead and sing a closing hymn on page 15, Go Tell It on the Mountain. 